So uh, today I want to talk about significant figures and I want to try to sum it up so that you just get a general overview and I want to keep it very simple. I don't want to overcomplicate significant figures. So the first thing that we should discuss is what is significant figures. So they're all digits in a measurement that are estimated certain the whole thing. So if you take a ruler and you measure 24.31 centimeters the two, the four, the three are all certain digits, and the last digit of the measurement is an estimate. But all of those digits are significant figures. Now, significant figures, when you're doing calculations with them, is a way to eliminate error in your measurements. So let's go through and try to figure out how to determine if a number is significant or not. So. These are our rules for determining if a number is significant. So let me zoom them out because I'm going to try to make them a lot easier for you. So first, and that's what that rule is right there, all numbers 1 through 9 are significant. So if I had a number 24, there's two significant figures in that number. They're both not zeros, so they're both significant to my measurement. It's the zeros that are a pain. So that's the next set of three rules that you see right here that we're going to discuss. Because zeros can be significant, or they might not be. It just depends on how they're written. So the first rule, and I'm just being honest, I don't really follow this rule very often. I call it the sandwich rule. So if I have a zero sandwiched between two non-zero digits like that, it's significant. It was measured. So any zeros that are in the middle are significant. So since they're always significant, I don't really worry about that rule. I'm more concerned with rules two and three because those are the zeros that are sometimes not significant. So let's look at the second rule. So that's for left zeros. So if I have zeros on the left, which you can see right here, if you look at that example, when I'm saying left, I really have to define what I'm looking at. Actually, let me zoom in for you. So if you look at this example, I scan with my eyes until I find a number that's not a zero. So I scan, and there's a non-zero digit. Now, I keep scanning to find my last non-zero digit, and I'm going to refer to these numbers as my number. This, from this position is where I want to determine if zeros are left or right. So these zeros are to the left of my number. So since they're to the left, zeros that are to the left never count. So don't think left and right in relation to the decimal point, think left and right in relation to your non-zero digits, which are right here. So those zeros don't count. So this number has one, two, three, four, five sig figs. So let me zoom back out so we can get back to the notes I was writing. Left zeros never count. So any zeros to the left are never going to count for you. So if you look at that second example here, all those zeros don't count because they're to the left of that 9. So all the zeros in the front don't count. We only have one rule left, so let's look at that third rule. Right zeros. Right zeros count if there's a decimal point. Not assuming that there's a decimal point. Like, I physically see a decimal point in the number. So let's zoom in so you can see those examples that I have. Maybe. Okay. So, right here, I have a decimal point, and I have my 6, 7. So these zeros 
that zero right there is not significant because it's to the left, but these zeros are significant because they are to the right of my 6, 7. So zeros to the right count if I see a decimal point, and I do right there. So these zeros count because there's a decimal point. Same with this number. My 2, 3 is right here, and that zero is to the right of my non-zero digits, and there's a decimal point, so they count. All right, so now let's try to figure out how many sig figs are in each one of these numbers. So pause the video, try to figure out how many sig figs are in each number, and when you come back, I'll explain. Okay, so when I look at these numbers, the 22.6, I have one, two, three non-zero digits. They're all significant. So that number has three significant figures in it. Now let's look at the next one. So for B, I have some zeros, so I have to be careful. So I have these non-zero digits, and that zero is to the right of them, so zeros to the right only count if I see a decimal point, which I do. So this number has one, two, three, four significant figures. Now let's look at the next one. Nine, ten. So I have some more zeros. This zero is also to the right of some non-zero digits, but there's no decimal point, so that zero does not count this time. So it only has two significant figures in that number. Now let's look at D. I have a bunch of zeros. So I find my non-zero digits, which are right here. Now that zero is in the middle, so I know that that counts because of the sandwich rule. So these four numbers count. Now anything to the left does not count. So these two zeros are to the left. They do not count. And I don't have any zeros to the right, so I don't have to worry about it. So one, two, three, four significant figures in that number. Now let's look at the last one. I have some zeros at the beginning. I have some zeros at the end. So I find my non-zero digits right here. That's my number. Zeros to the left do not count, so those ones don't count. Zeros to the right do count if there's a decimal point, and there is. So I have one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Now let's go ahead and try math with these uh, significant figures. So, uh, the first thing before we, uh, before we get into the math is we have to understand how to write a number in a various number of significant figures. So, let's talk about the number 7,000 really quickly. That right there only has one significant figure. So, that corresponds with what I wanted in A. Now, in B, I'd write the number with four significant figures, and I can make all those zeros significant by adding a decimal point right there. In C, I have my four sig figs there, and if I want to add two more, I just tack on two more zeros, and that gives me a total of six, six significant figures in that number. Now, the bottom one is going to cause some debate, so two significant figures. So look at that number 7,000. So this 7 is significant because it's not 0, but this 0 is significant if I'm trying to do two sig figs. But if I put a decimal place there, it doesn't work because it makes four sig figs. So I have to find a way to write this number with two significant figures, and the only way to do that is to use scientific notation. So I could put 7.0 times 10 to the third, which is the same as 7,000 because I have 7 times 10 to the third, which is 1,000, and 7 times 1,000 is 7,000. But it's telling me that that one zero is significant. So this number has two significant figures. Okay, now we're into some math with significant figures. So the first thing we want to look at is adding and subtracting. Now I have the technical definition written there in black. So you can see that we're dealing with the leftmost uncertain digit but I want to keep this nice and simple. So here in chemistry, we're going to be dealing with numbers that have decimal places, and that is most of the time going to govern how many sig figs should be in your answer. 
So you want to go with the fewest decimal places. So this number has one decimal place. This number has two decimal places. And I'm counting those right here. So one decimal place, two decimal places. The fewest amount is one, so my answer should only have one decimal place. So I'm going to plug in all the numbers. I get 25.1 plus 2.03, and I get 27.13. Now, I'm only allowed one decimal place, so I have to round to that one. So the three does not round up the one, so my answer would be 27.1. Let's try one more example. So this number here has three decimal places. This number only has one decimal place, so my answer should only have one. So I put the whole thing in my calculator, 0.134 plus 2.1 equals, and I get 2.234. I'm only allowed one decimal place, so that three rounds that down, so my answer would be 2.2. So now I want you to try some. So pause the video, try those by going by and round to the least number of decimal places. And when you get back, I'll go over the answers. Okay, so let's go over how to solve A and B. So with A, I have two decimal places in that number, and I have three in this one, so my answer should have two decimal places. So do the whole thing in the calculator, 23.27 minus 12.058, I get 11.212. I'm only allowed two decimal places, so I have to round to this one. The two does not round it up, so my answer is 11.21. The bottom one, for example B, I have two decimal places in that answer, or that number, and I have one in this one, so my answer can only have one decimal place. So 13.57 plus 6.3 gives me 19.87. And I'm only allowed one decimal place. So the 7 rounds that up. So my answer would be 19.9. All right, so the last thing to talk about with significant figures is multiplying and dividing. So I have the te technical definition for you right there. But the biggest thing to hone in on is we want to round our answer to the fewest number of significant figures possible when you're multiplying and dividing. So the two point, in the first example, the 2.4 only has two, two significant figures, and the 15.82 has four significant figures. So 2 is my smallest amount, so my answer can only have 2. So I do 2.4 times 15.82, and I get 37.968. And I'm only allowed two sig figs, so I start at the left and I count. One, two sig figs, and the nine would round up that seven, so I get 38 for my answer for the first one. I'm only allowed as many sig figs as in the smallest amount given. So now let's do the same thing for the bottom one. So this number has three sig figs, and this number has two sig figs. So the smallest amount is two. So let's put in my calculator, 0.567 divided by 0.0034, and I get 166.7647059 in my calculator. I'm only allowed two sig figs, which poses a little bit of a problem. So I have that as being a significant figure and the second six. This six would round that six up and listen very closely to how I say this because how I say it is really important. 166 rounds up to 170. A lot of people are really tempted to write 17 and you don't want to round or change the magnitude of a number. So 166 has to round up to 170 and that zero is not significant because there's no decimal place here. So I'm allowed to put that zero just to hold the ones place for me. 
Okay, so I want you to try these two and pause the video, try them, and then when you get back, I'll explain how to solve them. Okay, so let's look at this first one. I have 2.6. That has two significant figures in it. And then I have 3.78, which has three significant figures in it. So I'm only allowed two in my answer. So let's plug that into the calculator. And I get 9.828. Only allowed two sig figs, so one, two. The two does not round up the eight, so my answer is 9.8. Now let's try part B. So this number has three significant figures. And this number only has two. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get 6.54 divided by 0.37. I get 17.6756568. I'm only allowed two sig figs, so one, two, the 6 would round up the 7, so my answer would be 18. So that concludes sig figs, and I tried to keep it really short and sweet. So if you have any further questions about significant figures, please come into class tomorrow and ask me any questions that you may have.